What do you get when you combine this and this? Well, rumors suggest that Sony is about to create a brand new camera system, and not just any camera system, a digital medium format imaging system. And not the fake medium format that Fuji's offering right now, but a true, real 645 medium format imaging system. Rumors have been bubbling for the past couple years, but last week, Sony Alpha Rumors broke the story that Sony was developing a new high-end digital camera system, mashing together all of their latest tech. According to the initial report, there will actually be two cameras. The first being a 150 megapixel camera, and the second more premium option being a 200 megapixel camera. You know, I heard that rumor and I thought, you know, that seemed a little sus. Two cameras, 150 megapixels, 200 megapixels. That's pretty darn close in the grand scheme of things. Only a 25% increase. Look at that math. It seems more likely to me that the camera system would launch with just the one camera and probably the one with the best specs would be my guess, the, the 200. Also included in the rumor is that there would be between nine and 12 prime lenses to, to fill out the lens system for the camera. All right guys, so let's talk about the sensor size. Now, this isn't your mama's digital camera imaging sensor. In fact, it's not even what most folks would call a medium format digital imaging sensor. This is Sony's extremely large 53.5 by 40 millimeter imaging sensor. Now, whether you know this or not, that imaging sensor is already being used by companies like Phase One in their premier fancy schmancy, way overpriced camera bodies that they sell to us for like $50,000 or something like that. But more on that later. This is real 645, and I actually have a few frames from my Mamiya 645, and you can see these are pretty darn large frames, right? And, I, and I've also got some 35 millimeter frames here to compare it to, so, you know, just just vastly larger. These, these, these frames are much, much, much bigger. The 645 frames that my Mamiya shoots are actually 56 by 42 millimeters. So this new Sony imaging sensor is much closer to the size of actual real medium format. It's In fact, it's just a couple millimeters off. Whereas Fuji's, what the, the GFX, what they're calling their medium format sensor is actually 43.8 by 32.9. So much smaller. Comparing it to full frame, the 645 frame is 2.2 times larger uh, than 35 millimeter. So the imaging gains, the quality of image that you're gonna get off that new Sony sensor are just gonna be tremendous. But this is a film channel after all, so at least we got to use some actual film frames here. One other really cool rumor is that this camera would be the first camera from Sony to offer their innovative curved sensor tech. That's a, this is another rumor that's been kicking around for years and years at this point, but Sony has been actively working on developing a curved image sensor. Uh, I don't have to explain this to you guys, but most imaging sensors in the back of your cameras now, just like a piece of film, are completely flat. And with the light having to pass through rounded lens elements onto a flat imaging plane, that creates lots of optical problems that have to be corrected. So having a curved imaging sensor would make for much less complex and perhaps more compact lens design. It should go without saying though, this is not the kind of tech that you can retroactively drop into a, an, an existing camera system, at least without some real compromises. So it makes a lot of sense for Sony to deploy this new technology in a brand new, into a, into a brand new imaging pipeline. And frankly, with this new system that they're probably gonna tout as their flagship, the top end, the best of the best, it makes a lot of sense to use this new tech. Now, if Sony is designing a completely new imaging sensor and a completely new camera system, we're also going to have to have completely new lenses. After the system is fully fleshed out, they're going to be between 9 and 12 prime lenses. The rumor suggests that there are going to be three that are announced at launch, all of these being f2.8 lenses. The f2.8 makes a lot of sense because it's a reasonably bright aperture, and the equivalent depth of field on 35mm is actually 1.7, so no one's going to accuse a 2.8 lens of being fast in 35mm land. When, but when your imaging sensor is 2.2 times larger than the 35mm frame, you're going to get some nice bokeh. And I, th I think the 2.8 lenses for this new Sony system will equate to about a one, an f1.7 aperture lens on a 35mm camera. Sony has patented a number of lens designs, um, really specific weird numbers, 84mm all the way to 387 millimeters so um, what these first three prime lenses may be I mean it's anybody's guess but it stands to reason at least to me that it would get something reasonably wide in the form of a 24 or 35 millimeter a 50 millimeter and then something that amounts to about an 80 millimeter so that would be what I would expect I don't have anything to base that on another rumor that I read was that there would also perhaps be an e-mount adapter that would allow you to use some of your existing Sony lenses on these new cameras I don't know how useful that's going to be, especially if you're using a curved image sensor. I, I just don't know what you can expect from those lenses, but 
that rumor's out there too. I, th I think it's finally time that we address the elephant in the room. Um, it's, it's price. If you've looked at medium format digital cameras in any capacity, you've probably not looked at them for very long because the price, let's just say, is prohibitive. Because, because many of these cameras cost as much as a new Corvette, even, mo even really successful photographers have a hard time justifying their purchase. There wasn't anything in this report as to a specific price other than just it was going to be very expensive. And I think with Fuji's top-end GFX system clocking in at about $10,000, one could reasonably assume that this is going to be a really pricey camera set. As I touched on earlier, those phase one systems are nearly $50,000. I don't know that I'm be so bold as to claim that Sony's gonna shoot for the $50,000 mark with this new system, but I think you're going to see Sony try to wrap a lot of their really good technology in it, their, their autofocusing systems and, their, and the ability to capture images really quickly. Um, Sony is well equipped to offer a product that stands head and shoulders above um, the existing me digital medium format camera offerings. So it's possible they try to break into that really high price bracket. Um, it's just too early to tell at this point. You know, I would love to see this thing down around $10,000 where we, we might have a reasonable chance at acquiring one, but I wouldn't expect to see this camera for anything less than $25,000 and probably it'll be more than that. As we hear about these new camera releases, the logical question is, do we need it? Can, you know, can we find a use for it? And unfortunately, here comes the bucket of cold water that I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dump on you. I think for most of us photographers, the answer is going to be no. For most of us photographers, this ain't it. We're gonna we're gonna think about it. We're gonna we're gonna lust after it. We're gonna drool over these specs. You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna imagine what shooting such a cool camera is gonna be like. But at the end of the day, I am a professional photographer. I'm shooting images almost every day in some capacity, and I'm still shooting on my Sony A7R III. And I've not had a single client come to me and say. You know what, Isaac, I really wish that you would have upgraded to the A7R4 because there just aren't enough megapixels. I just think the use cases for a 150 or a 200 megapixel medium format imaging sensor camera are very small. There aren't gonna be that many uses for them. That's not to say they don't exist. There's probably some dude out there right now is thinking about shooting the new Ferrari or the new Lamborghini. Um, and that's, I totally get it. You know, you're the guy, one of one. You're the guy who needs to be looking at this camera. But for most of us, we're just gonna enjoy the specs, you know, hope that maybe we can pick one up on the used market five or six years from now at a reasonable price. And until then, we'll just lust after it. So what does all this mean for me and you? It looks like Sony is about to release a game-changing, state-of-the-art digital camera imaging system. And I think that's incredibly exciting. You know, we can look at this curved imaging sensor tech and just pray, cross our fingers, hope that it, it trickles down into our uh, 35 millimeter cameras at some point, and there are big innovations to come. Sony's drawing a line in the sand and saying, hey, this is the best camera in the world. And if you want the best camera in the world, you're gonna be shooting a Sony. So I think it's really cool. It's cool that Sony's driving innovation, and I'm excited to see it. But if you're actually interested in owning a medium format camera before then, check out this other video I made about five affordable medium format film cameras. And I think that for a couple hundred bucks, you can scratch that medium format itch. But until next time, uh, we'll see ya.